you know, it's hard to progress and be effective if, if the, the foundation of that house isn't uh, solid to begin with. Right. Oh, and I'm not, right. not ignoring you. Welcome to Feel Good Fridays. Um, I've, I've got the two of you here right now. What I'm beginning to wonder, Fridays, noon, you know, starting your weekend isn't maybe the best time for everybody. Um, okay. Because I'm, I'm doing a variety of times and, and trying to get the folks in the UK and, and my, my gals down uh, under and in New Zealand as well, there isn't okay. a perfect time. So, right, right, um, right. Tomorrow is going to be a, a bigger session. I don't know if, if you guys are available, but I'm kind of just going to sit here for a couple hours and let people blast me. Um, mm -hmm. We don't have trade shows and events and those type of things anymore. And mm -hmm. a lot of where I'm most effective and where my knowledge comes in is you name the condition, the problem you're dealing with, and I'll tell you how to do it on the machine. So, mm -hmm. um, and I just wanted to give you guys a place to, to be accountable, be motivated and, and have a little bit of fun. Uh, Simplicity is key. Um, myself, you know, from the time I was thrown out of that doctor's office for raising my voice and shouting some profanities, um, I got it out of a partial knee replacement, um, which I was supposed to get at 30 cause I was old and I'm down about 60 pounds since I started this knowing of course that, you know, regular bodies don't lose weight the same as, as our lipedema community, the principles of exercise, you know, we still want to be strong. We want to target that cellulite. There's lots of different reasons you'll do those exercises it's the weight loss that, that is kind of the variable in this community, how it's going to be effective, where you're going to see those changes. Um, but absolutely, I, I, I've had too much success with weight loss to not say it's not a possibility. So I'm not in control of the food piece, which is for, for anyone, 70 to 80 percent of, of really um, whether we're dealing with inflammation or weight, um, it, it's a contributing factor. So thank God for places like Cheryl's, uh, page for food intolerance. And, you know, even though I don't have mm -hmm. lymphedema, there, there's things even I didn't think about, you know, we think we're doing the right thing, eating fish and, and brown rice all the time. So today is very simple. I'm going to start okay. capping. And, and the point of these sessions is hopefully after the course of a couple of months, uh -huh. you have somewhere to go to when you don't want to think and you want someone else to tell you what to do, I'm here for you. So Thank you. today, um, I'm not sure what platforms you guys are working on. Uh, we're going to be doing uh, a little bit of standing to start. And then we're going to be doing um, just some very light uh, movement. Uh, this week really seems to be, I'm getting a lot of questions about what is the best speed for this or what is the best speed for that. And, you know, like walking into a gym and saying, you know, what, what's the best routine to lose weight? It really mm -hmm. depends on what trainer you're working with. You know, you, you ask five trainers, you're going to get five different routines based on how they've been trained and what they like to do. But the, the cool thing about vibration machines, for those of you that have been using, you'll know this, lymph is moving whenever you're moving. So even if you're, you know, some people feel the lower speeds, that sloppy, choppy, wobbly because you feel things moving but for some people the slower the skin is moving and the more time the body has to react sometimes it can be painful we had a lot of questions this week about surgery can i use my machine post-surgery to be honest with you i find the faster you can get going which really depends on how close those feet can get together on incisions and, and bruises faster movement gives that skin and, and the incisions themselves less time to react to that slapping motion so sometimes the really slow speeds we think like a treadmill you know i'm going to start slow but sometimes the really slow speeds aren't as tolerable and i know a lot of times in your books or your manuals it, it, it always coaches start slow and i've written some of these manuals but for this community and, and really anybody below baseline in the vibration machine world sometimes driving a little faster kind of like you're driving on a bumpy gravel road if you're going really slow you're bouncing all over the place mm -hmm coffee's flying all over if you hit the gas a little bit you still feel the bumps in the road but it's a little smoother more like you're skimming across the top so those mid to higher frequencies depending on your tolerance i'll never put an exact number on it there's too many damn machines and different bodies out there but you know sometimes you'll feel going faster is a little more comfortable but the book told you to start slow for the first two weeks so you kind of got to play with that the big lesson when you're dealing with surgery feel good applications is reducing the time and the amount of intensity. So always in, in oscillating mode, bring those feet closer together. Uh, we're gonna start this, depending on what you're working with. I'm on a Rumblex today that has 60 speeds. I'm gonna bring mine as a suggestion to the 30, 40 range. 
uh, depending on what you're working on. If you've been working on a machine for a while, I had a question yesterday, well, how fast can I go? I don't know, how much weight can you lift? You know, you'll, I wouldn't start at the top of the totem pole, but you know, mixing up and playing with your speeds is a very passive way to keep the exercises changed the same without having to learn a bunch of new moves, but keeping that body challenged and in check with, with different speeds. So our feet are about hip width apart. You can start in your stool. If, if, if you're not decrepit or dealing with pain, you can certainly stand. We're gonna to progress to some pelvic tilts, but we're just gonna start with uh, warming up, getting some lymph moving in the lower body to add a little bit of upper body at the same time. I've done this in other sessions. You can add your hands, lock those arms up just to get a little bit of movement into the neck and the shoulders. If you want a little bit more intensity and, and your girth here allows you, lean over and add those elbows as a variation. And just try and relax the head. As a woman, we always carry the tension, the stress in the neck and the shoulders, the bra, the purse. So when stimulation gets there, especially if you're a new user, we tend to fight it and resist. So don't let your head completely drop, but just kind of relax and, you know, maybe pinch the shoulder blades together, roll around, play with whatever feels good. Make sure that you're breathing. It sounds silly, but it's really un not uncommon to hold your breath. You're so focused on other things that you hold your breath. And, and sometimes people complain they get headaches and it must have been my head shaking on the machine. More commonly, it's, it's poor breathing patterns. So just make sure you're breathing, which is hard to do when I'm yapping. Um, but I want you guys doing this for 30 seconds to a minute. If you're a big desk jockey and you've got your machine under your desk, you know, you could do this a couple minutes every hour just to get things moving. Um, the next thing that we're going to progress to is a standing position. For those of you, or actually, no, we're going to do something else first. Sorry. Um, I did this in one of our first sessions. We're going to work on um, stretching the back of the legs and primarily uh, this is a sciatic stretch. It's called a nerve floss. So a nerve floss while you're still sitting, we're going to take one leg at a time, depending on your range of motion. And if you're standing, you can do this just by hanging on to your handles. You can do stuff like this and just raising that foot forward as far as you can while keeping your leg locked. And just hold it still for like two to three seconds. If you're seated, you can also add your head and you'll feel it deepens that stretch. Then we got to rotate legs. So switch it over, bring it up, hold for three to five seconds, relax. Again, if, if you're standing and you've got something with handles, which I do not today, you can do this one just raising that leg and you'll feel a, a gentle little tug on the back of the hamstring and the toes. I'm forgetting my other person's name. Andrea, are you feeling that down the back of the leg? Nice. You know, these are all things that we do on the floor, you know, from time to time. We just don't think to do it on the machine. Again, the machine's just an environment that gets more done in less time to a degree. So the next one we're gonna go to is some basic pelvic tilts. This is always my starting because of that bad knee that I never did get repaired, poo poo on that doctor. Um, you know, I have sciatic issues. I sit too much. I pick up my children and my dog and I, I don't lift things right. You know, we all do things throughout the course of our day that reduces our range of motion. So the, the idea behind the pelvic tilts, you know, is to loosen things up, improve that range of motion if you're gonna to progress to squats or things like that, you, you'll find it'll improve your range even within the course of a session. So that's move number one. Now, the next one we're gonna do, Andrea has handles, um, or actually both of you have handles, okay? Um, I do not, and very commonly you'll see me turn around on the machine and, and use my stool. So how, for those of you that have handles, stay where you're at, but how you turn around on the machine without scaring your, you know, I'm always moving around while it's moving, you put your heel right in the middle and you're not moving at all. Your heel's kind of the point of contact. So your heels are right in the middle. It's kind of like you're just doing a circle on the floor. You don't, but if you're standing on the outer edge and you're trying to turn around, you're going to maybe just destabilize yourself. So yeah, just put your heels in the middle. Okay. And for this one, those of you that have handles, depending on your height, you can take your forearms and just rest them on your handles. And we're gonna do a little cat cow. I'm gonna lean over and we're just gonna tilt the arch that back up like a cat. You're gonna try pulling that bum in towards your belly button. And then we're gonna go the other way. 
I have absolutely no range this way. Never have. Like you're trying to touch the back of your butt to the back of your head. And then come back up. I like doing this one time of with breathing. I always like having good music going, but you can't do those things on Facebook for free. Um, depending on how tight your low back is, uh, the distance between you, your feet, if you find this is jarring and uncomfortable, bring your feet closer. You may find throughout the course of the exercise, you actually start loosening up and you want more action. So you feel like widening your feet up and taking a little bit more shape, go for it. My knees are just unlocked if I'm going wider. Um, if it's hard for you to keep your knees bent for long durations, it is okay to lock your legs. I would rather you stand for a minute or two and get some more total body effect than, than you know, not be able to stand because you can't lock your legs. So you at least get into this position, but bring your feet really close if you've got to keep them locked, okay? And now we're gonna stand back up. What have I got next on my list? Oh, we're gonna progress also while we're in this position. Uh, for those of you that didn't join me for, for leg day that I'm still feeling on Wednesday, uh, we're gonna do a little bit of a calf stretch. So we're gonna keep one foot in place. If you're leaning like this or this, don't matter. We're gonna take one foot, just hook it on the ball so the heel is off the back of the machine. Lock that back leg and push that heel down to the ground. You should feel that all the way up into the back of the knee almost. Hold that for two to five seconds, really depends on how, how tight you feel. Come up, take a break. Try to get a good three to five reps per side on this one. And if you've worn some heels and shouldn't have, or you've been doing something where you feel tension or tightness in those calves, maybe you just come from a big massage, you know, you might want to do this one for just a minute or two on its own. Okay, now we're going to switch sides. The other one's jealous. Hook it under the ball of that foot, push that heel down. Two, three, back up. The leg you're standing on is slightly bent. Nice. And then one more for good measure. If you feel like you need a couple more, my left side tends to be a little tighter. That's where my bad knee is. So if I'm feeling tightness on my left side, I tend to do a couple more extra stretches sometimes if you need it. Um, the very last one that we're going to do it as an option, so that just to sort of review before, if you want to join me on the ground. We started uh, seated, a little bit of a warm up. We put our arms and our hands. You guys are, that are with me can just keep shaking. I'm just doing a recap here. The next one we moved to was a nerve floss. Andrea tried that one standing. So standing would look something like this where you're hanging on to your machine. I'm just gonna raise the one. Ooh, my chalkboard's not attached. Uh, the next one we moved to, of course, was our tilts. Did those, and you can do pelvic tilts whenever. I probably do this one Oh gosh, five, six times a day sometimes just for a minute or two because I'm sitting too much. Um, the next one we progressed to was our standing cat cow. Okay. There's a million ways you can do other positions on this machine that you know how to do already. And then we progressed into the calf stretches. And again, three to five reps aside on those two. Okay. And if anything that I'm showing you guys as I'm doing these sessions, I'll just have a little powwow here for a second. And if you guys want to keep shaking, that's fine. But one of the big things I find with these sessions is, you know, sometimes things I say don't work for you. Or maybe, you know, you, you stubbed your toe this morning and you can't the machine. So a lot of times when I'm doing these sessions, if there's ever something that you need modified that doesn't work for your body type and you need an alternative, there's 850,000 ways to do most things. So if, if the calf stretches I'm showing you or some of the squats I'm showing you don't work for your body type, but you still want to target certain muscle groups, there's always an alternative to, to be done. So well, again, what I'm trying to do with these sessions is build them up over weeks so that there's a bit of learning and, and not drop 14 years of, of Debbie's brain onto you in the course of two sessions and scare you away for life. Um, did either of you that are here today have any particular questions while, while you've got me? Hi, everyone. Andrea, I don't have particular questions, but I just have to say thank you. 
I've had my vibration plate for two years and I've ignored it for the last several months. And I found you on Facebook and you have remotivated me. So thank you very much. <laughs> you know, I appreciate it. And, and a lot of what I, you know, the more athletic side of this group, you know, there's some people that are triathletes, you know, just because we have lipedema doesn't mean we don't live, but you know, it's surprising sometimes how, how far a little bit goes. And, and I really, what I was hoping, we're, we're, we're kind of two months on this page. Um, you know, I found out about these conditions myself about three, four years ago, and it was like this light bulb went off. You know, I know, I know people that have this, and I, I've joked in other sessions, I, I remember probably about two days after I came back from my first FDRS conference, I walked up to this gal I knew at the post office, and within two minutes, I got my hands behind her knees looking for pads. So, you know, thank you as a community for embracing my craziness and my lack of, you know, education in the fitness world. But there's something about these machines for 14 years. Uh, you know, there was no school, there was no education. And a, a lot of times what, what I coach, you know, is coming from a place very much like you guys, that self-discovery, you know, there, there isn't a book for lipedema and every toy out there or Durkheim's disease is another one. But you know, I, I knew through my own experimentation with my own clients that some of these things had to work. And, and again, as I, 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 I sound like I'm always saying how the manual tells you is wrong, but like anything, sometimes things need to be modified. And a lot of what I share is just based on my own experience. And, you know, if I can save any one of you from the knife or, or ignorant dog, you know, I've just been doing this a lot longer and have a bit more courage. So people like Dr. Herbst and, and, and many of, of her colleagues, you know, I don't have a license to lose is something we kind of joke about. And there's things that, you know, as a doctor or researcher, you're curious about, but you can't just try things and do it on Facebook like I can. So I, I appreciate you guys kind of being my guinea pigs to a degree. And it's so rare that no matter how downhill you are, you can't benefit in some way from these machines. You know, there's, there's lots of vibration tools. I'm, I'm really going to start ramping up other things that I love. What you can't see behind camera, I've got like Tesla magnetic coils. I've got detox flip. I, I've been doing vibration machines so long. My, my other fascination is, is what they wrap up the effects of elsewhere. So is it a lympha press? Is it a, so th something else I specialize in, in my medical work is, you know, how to use these vibration machines to accelerate the effects of other treatments, stem cells, you know, lipedema surgery, you know, all kinds of different things. And the common thing most people face within experience is fear or even worse, you've had a bad experience. So, you know, you probably stopped using your machine, Andrea, for one of two reasons, you got bored or you got hurt. That's really what it boils down to from regardless of what you're dealing with. And even the biggest of athletes I have had, and I'm not naming names, but NBR, NBA all-star people that I have dealt with and there's blisters all over their hands and their feet. And I'm like, you were standing too wide and you stuck it for 10 minutes. How do you know that? Because I know, you know, even the biggest of athletes, even though they know what they're supposed to be doing, they get on this thing, think it's just this fluffy little thing and it's, mm -hmm. it's to overdo so the three to five minutes I know I nag it but you know it's kind of like a tanning bed you know you can go for a tan and you know if you didn't get enough you can always go back the next day but if you're sunburned you're not gonna be working on that tan for days you know weeks in some cases so yes I used to have a tanning facility in my I used to have everything in my <laughs> shop I was in a small town and you know vibration machines were kind of the stem but the, the women that came a lot of times, the husbands, you know, I don't want to stand and shake, you know, or, you know, and I'm in a farming rig community. So I, you know, I'd have music beds or the foot baths or saunas. So the wives could come and do their little shake classes with me. And there was always something for the, the hubby or the, the kids to do. Um, I, I really, it's, it's really validating what you've said. And, and I, I appreciate you listening to my ramblings. It comes from a place of passion and, um, it's, it's, exo we're getting very busy on the page and, and I do feel like a broken record sometime, but the engagement's been great. And, and I, tomorrow I thought it would be great for all the time I've spent answering questions this week to just let everybody kind of blast me. You know, mm -hmm. sometimes I, it, I hate having to look through a page and dig through units. And 
you know, so, sometimes there's things I'll refer you to, and sometimes I'll try to answer it one-on-one. -on -one, and sometimes I do answer it a little differently than I answered it to this person, or maybe I've changed my mind and tried something new. And so my, my teachings and, and what I used to preach five years ago is different than what I did 10 years ago. And experience does that. So um, I always invite if there's something that you guys have done or tried or learned on mm -hmm. the machine, you know, I don't remember everything all the time. Um, but a lot of times it's just doing what you're already doing or supposed to be doing in this new environment. Um, a few years ago, we <laughs> took, uh, Dr. Oz and Robin have their nine moves to morning wellness or something that they do. And, you know, we thought, screw that. And we did it on the machine and, and it was done in like five minutes. It, it actually turned out to be kind of boring and was not really my cup of tea, but mm -hmm. you know, anything can be converted to a degree in the <clears throat> That, that doubles the feel good Fridays. I'm going to start delving more into stuff. I'm probably not to be playing with, you know, surgeries and pins and pacemakers, but yeah. you know, I've always felt filled that role of, you know, you phone me, you know, Andrea or Patricia calls me up and, you know, I know I'm not supposed to use my machine, but I feel like crap and I'm going to use it anyway, because I've been using it for five years. And I, I sometimes when you, you've been using a machine for a while, it's not that you can't use it. It's, it's the experience of what to do, what's too much. And, you know, I have all these surgeons calling me all, what do you mean you've got somebody on the machine two weeks after a vertebrae has been put in place? They're sitting, their spine's nowhere. You know, they could put their legs on it. Oh, okay. You know, there's that common sense piece doesn't always exist. Now okay. So, okay. You know, when, when people ask me about surgeries or injuries, any kind of contraindications, I, I made a smart ass comment yesterday. Contraindications are only ask Debbie first, you know, it, it, in the whole time I've been doing vibration machines, the only spook I've ever really had one time was I had a customer lose speech on a machine and it was my elementary school music teacher. And she had a really bad concussion about a year before. And she was having like blackouts and you know and, and I kept saying to her doctor like Tina just don't seem right like she just don't seem and same doctor um so she I used to have this music therapy bed um I still do I just don't sell them but um she used to come and recover on it and uh she come in one day and said you know I think I'm ready to get back on the machines and I said are you sure sure enough three times in a row she lost the ability to speak I got on the phone and I said you need uh -huh. this woman is not right Something is not right neurologically in her brain. And when I increased circulation, she couldn't talk. It was like she was having a stroke. So um, to me, my experience is at the point where it's a diagnostic tool. Sometimes when your body has intermittent swelling or pain or, you know, the reason I ask all these stupid questions is your body's telling me sometimes something's there. Um, mm -hmm. I had another lady one time, fittest 50 year old you've ever met, did everything right, never had a health problem. But I could never get a six pack on this woman. She had, she always looked like she was about four or five months pregnant and rock hard. I didn't know. Um, she finally went for some additional tests and she had a fibroid in her womb. Like, you know, so these are things wow. where the doctors going, well, you got to cut out the carbs. And I'm like, you know what? It ate the carbs. <laughs> it did everything she should have been doing. So um, I, I've just learned, like you guys, to question. You know, a lot of times I'm wrong. You know, I don't do it right all the time, but then I know, and I remember for next time not to do that. Um, but the worst that you're ever going to experience is, is the same effects as over-exercise. You know, yeah. you know what it's like when you overdo it. And, and the, the big thing I do more, especially with the feel good and why I say use it more often, you know, if you do overdo it, um, you can use it to recover. But if it's, if you're doing it just enough for that energy lift and you feel good, especially if you're a new user, don't overdo it elsewhere. You know, I've said this, you're going to go paint the house and do the laundry. And, and, and then the next morning I get a phone call. Oh my gosh, that machine. I couldn't move today. I was so sore. So a lot of times when it's empowering and lifting you, you don't think about it. You only think about it when something goes wrong. So, you know, I do. Um, oh, I'm sorry. I do have a question. Like I just started, but I like was really losing my mobility this past year. Um, I do yeah, have a lot of people are going downhill this year lipedema and I have bad knees and also I just found out I had like a uh, something wrong with a disc is out of place all right mm -hmm. so I know when I first started I did before I found you so thank you very much oh, I just I just got on the machine and I like you said I just got on it and I'm just uh, I was doing the program and it would go really low and then <laughs> high and um, then after that that whole week I had trouble walking like I actually got worse Oh, no, and, I did it. Yes, and I, I didn't, so I 
didn't use it for a while and um, because I got the beginning of the year and then I found you and I, I saw where you said, you know, you stand more towards the middle. It's the simplest yeah. thing. I yeah. don't know why after 14 <laughs> years, these doctors don't take a note. Oh, yeah. Yeah. For and you. that's hopping. You. That's hopping. And your exercise is just the ones like I didn't realize you can sit down. Like I have a stool now that you can sit down. Now, just recently, I started just standing and yeah. trying to do the exercises, the squats a little at a time to do yeah. that. You know, that just started like, you know, this week. Um, so I, you know, I just, I don't know. I, um, I, I back. Think it's the back feeling. Have you had some improvement? Obviously. Um, it, it's, it doesn't hurt as much. Like I go, I have to go see an orthopedic, uh, doctor, um, next week and, um, you know, to see what's going on. I, I had my MRI and everything, so I know there's something wrong, but, May I ask um, what your nine to five is Patricia. Like, I'm retired now. Yeah. Pardon Sorry? me? What, I what do. Is it? Uh, no, I'm retired now, but I, I do, I had uh, downsized my house. I did a lot of lifting of boxes and everything. I mean, like really heavy because I, I just always do things and I have a horse. So I was always lifting feed bags and things like that. Okay. So, okay. Yeah. See? So I but have a lot. <laughs> probably what's happening again. I am not a doctor. Don't uh -huh. diagnose, don't treat. Mm -hmm. but a lot of times with that repetitive, you know, especially in the spine I work with some of the weirdest spinal scary situations you use. I always get a phone call after the fact with the back stuff oh I did this what it, well if you'd call me first I would have said not to do that uh, right the right thing with the spine even if your feet are wide the spine is actually the last area the machine will ever hurt you because it's kind of more the pivot point than the movement there's very oh. little movement to the spine itself unless you're you know, standing off or, or directing it in that fashion. So by correcting the feet, you've, you've improved that, but you know, sometimes the tension, it, the, all those little muscles around the, the spine itself, the supportive mm -hmm. structure, you know, when the big muscles poop out, it's the little muscles that start picking up a compensation piece. And then sometimes it's so tense, it can cause alignment issues. I I've seen, you know, guys break their back working out at the gym in one lift. So, you know, Wow. That technique goes a little way, but those, those muscles can be very um, detrimental in, in causing those issues. And I, th I think where the machine in my experience over the years, not only <laughs> helps as a treatment when you're dealing with these pains is it's, it's not the bone or the spine itself, but it's that tension and getting that some blood and, and even some lymph into those areas. And if, if you've progressed to the point where you're like, you're developing things like neuropathy and sciatic where those nerves are getting pinched or there's, there's impact to the nerves. No, I don't have no. A lot of times what we do is, is we treat the secondary problem. Uh, the, an example with me, when, when my, my spine and my hips start getting tense and, and pinching that sciatic nerve, I, I automatically go for the hip and I'm massaging it and I'm rolling it. But anytime that happens, it takes me about two, three days. And if I can't fix it on my machine, then I go, oh, my knee's out. I don't, I no. never. So whenever I have the sciatic, it's, it's, it's the, the, the compensation piece, but it mm -hmm. actually tells me that my knee's out. And if I go see my, if I can't fix it, my body on the machine, I have mm -hmm. a big chiro that knows the machines and um, it's an adjustment, but it's, it's okay. the last thing I think of. Sometimes I can pop it back yeah. myself. I'm kind of like Mel Gibson that way. I still not, didn't have surgery. So I'll deal with that. I don't get the pain. I get swelling. I get achy. I can tell you if it's going to rain, but so very commonly okay. with spinal issues, you know, there, maybe there's a, a difference in, in the hips that are, that are causing other issues and how your body's calm. It's always on the left. It's the left side. And it's interesting. You said that because when my back hurts, my knee doesn't quite hurt as, as much, but when my knee hurts, uh, you know, then, then my back is okay. It's, I, it's crazy. Ladies, I have to go. See you next okay. time. Thank you. Okay, Andrea. Bye. If, if I over talk, had questions, just message me, girl. <laughs> uh, we could continue a bit though Patricia that's the whole reason I do the lives on Friday is sometimes things don't fit in the box but okay uh, another one that you might want to try if, if if you're finding range of motion it allows you to sit on the machine mm -hmm. just sitting on the machine passively mm -hmm. you know, as long as there's no hip issues um you know any prolapses or anything there but it, it's a really nice way a lot of chiros and spinal surgeons not knowing the machines would go what you're gonna put the <laughs> on the machine but again right. if you're Seated in the middle as I coach you, you're, the, the spine's more the pivot point and the movement sort of wide, it's more the hips themselves and the thighs. Okay. 
Um, but it's a really lazy way just to address that tension. And that one where we were, like when we were sitting on the machine or on the stool. Right. You could kind of do like, like a cat, cow, you know, and, and just get All some right. in the spine. And okay. if you can tolerate it, you can also get a little upper body by sitting on your hands. Oh. So like sitting on the machine, palms down. Right. Under the butt cheek it'll move your arms at the same time. Uh, a okay. lot of my ladies, range of motion is weird. It's, and I always used to tease the gals back at the studio, you know, nobody can do a push up or go down because my knees hurt. There's always a reason not to do a push up. But right, as soon right. as we find out that this improves cellulite, <gasps> range of motion <laughs> comes out of the heavens and people can sit themselves on the machines. So, but a lot of times you can sit on it because it's, it's, it's passive, right? You're not on the okay. knees, you're not having, it's not a weight bearing kind of position like a push up is. So, right. it's, but you can get some movement and some strength going, you know, maybe it's carpal tunnel. There's all kinds of reasons mm -hmm. that a, a push up is challenging for certain people. And, and with this community, you got hypermobility and all that kind of stuff. Mm -hmm. too. So mm -hmm. That might be one to try. I try um, that. Um, I, I tried your, your first exercise. You know, that's what one I tend to do. Okay. And if you're really stiff, sometimes doing a little standing after you've uh -huh. sat down, because mm -hmm. The, the getting down the floor is never the hard part. It's the getting back up. Right, right. Sometimes right. if, you, you know, if you're, you, you undo everything we did while you're sitting there, you might just want mm -hmm. to do it too, just to loosen it off. And okay. really with the back, less is more. Um, the, the one where I was leaning over and then yes. that probably felt really good. And you can yes. kind of just maneuver, play with your angles till you hit the spot, if you know what okay. I mean. Yes, okay. I do know. I do know. Thank you. Like I try, I didn't try before. Like I was standing and then I saw a tape of yours yesterday and you did today where you do, you know, you're moving your hips around. You're trying to do, you know, get that motion. And I felt so stiff. After yeah. a while. Yeah. It's all on the left side. I can feel it gets really tight. And I, I was doing that and I never thought to do that before. So that's like really I'll helpful. Give you one more variation because I know you got a stool there. Uh-huh. But I'm going to turn the machine a bit so you can see what I'm doing here. Okay. And it's perfect because then I can remember my coffee on the way back. <laughs> <laughs> now, again, range of motion varies for everybody. That first one I was doing, the nerve floss, where I was lifting, yes. mm -hmm. that one you'll find on YouTube. A lot of chiros do it where this one is not an option. If this figure four one, we mm -hmm. But seated in our chair or on the couch. Um, with this one, you want to make sure you're not hunched. Okay. Not leaning over. You want a nice straight spine. Okay. And the, the foundation of this one is a glute stretch. But if you push your, your chest forward, mm -hmm. you can feel the pull get deeper. And then take that hand. Okay. Just push on that knee a little bit, and you're going to feel that that whole area where I guarantee the pain is open yes. right now. Oh, yeah, I feel, oh, well, I feel that that is like, that's really Killer, tight. Right? That's really tight. Yeah. You're on, and one side's always worse than the other, right? Yes. Uh, my left side. Right, right. So this that's one, if it it's really, really bad, you might just make a mental note a couple times a day while you're sitting at your desk. You could do this one anytime you're seated. Right, you right. You also do this one laying down in your bed at night. Like you literally, I don't know. Oh. I'll give you a visual here. Okay. Because I always forget till I'm in bed. But you uh -huh. literally would lay down. Okay. And just pull it towards you. Oh, okay. Okay. Right, right. If you want a deeper stretch, you could put your foot up. Okay. But that's just an idea too. But I find the sitting one, you'll see me driving down the freeway in the city with my leg up on the steering wheel sometimes just because okay. I feel, right? <laughs> <laughs> I mean, again, I'm not some big exercise guru that went to school for 10 years. I have sciatic issues and uh -huh. but I'm very flexible. Um, you know, I can, I don't know if I could do it today, but. Oh my gosh. <laughs> but for me, you know, that one is the, is it gets in where I want to go. And if I really want to be a, a, a guru and a warrior, I might even add a roller or a tennis ball while I'm doing that just to get a little more. But I, I think you'll find that one. You know, if, if you stick with it a couple, three yes. times a day, yes. all of a sudden you're going to notice a big, oh, that, that it's not going to hurt as much. And that's where you just start leaning forward with the chest to stretch. Okay. Okay. That well, hand on the knee or the elbow on the knee is just a little trick to get in. And um, 
on the machine, bring the feet close together and okay. the stimulation just adds a little bit more to it. Okay, perfect, perfect. I can't wait to try all these. I'll put them all into effect. And I've been doing it like two to three times a day now um, on the machine oh. and about 10 minutes each time because my, my thing has a timer on it. I mean, I could do like, well, yesterday I did 20 minutes the last time because it just felt so good. And I, I just did like, um, I did the leg massage where I sat down on the floor and just put the backs of my legs like, on the machine. I like did that, that one. one. Yeah, yeah. Awesome. And that was good because um, I'm trying to get the lymph, uh, you know, moving and everything like that. And um, it sounds like your range of motion just gives you a few more lazy options on the massage. So if you're getting mm -hmm. down and doing your calves, one of the videos I did, um, if you go back into the, the media is under feel is massage. Okay. And he has like a, you could literally start with your calves, move up to the hams, do your, you can do everything really from the belly button down, but wow. what sometimes becomes challenging on like the tops of the thighs or the hips is you need a little upper body to hold right. yourself up. So sometimes like an aerobic step or maybe you got a foot stool just mm -hmm. to give the upper body something to prop up on and then, okay. and then you can enjoy it versus it be like work. Right, <laughs> right. Right. No, I love it. It's, it's, it's helping. It's helping. I could just, you know, and I saw, I see some of the people that say show that have been doing it for a month and there there's like a difference, you know, in, in the swelling in their leg and everything. So I'm hoping for that. Think, especially with the lymph piece, you know, consistency is key. Mm -hmm. you know what I mean, mm -hmm. and sometimes, you know, within the first month, I'm going to say it's, it's very common to increase swelling, even gain a couple few oh. pounds as, as the system gets moving and flowing. Okay. Um, this community is a little easier to have those discussions with because we're more body aware. We take the measurements. We, we have a relationship with our body. Whereas, mm -hmm. you know, the chick at the gym, oh my God, if she gained three pounds, she'd return to mm -hmm. the machine next week. But we also know that muscle weighs more than fat and, you know, long-term mm -hmm. the scale, even though we're all slaves to it, um, isn't always the best measurement. And I hate mm -hmm. the calorie thing, you know, counting calories is so useless. Um, mm -hmm. you know, there, there's, I don't want to say it's, it's a guideline, but you know, some of us yeah. live and breathe by the calorie counter. I had a machine from, uh, it was out of Italy the other day. They were doing the exact same things. I don't know what the differences was, but this lady's machine told her she was burning twice as many calories as this lady's. <laughs> what am I doing wrong? I'm like, I don't know. That's why I don't use that crap. It's not uh, effective. So yeah. you know, sometimes it's borderline gimmicky. Trust your own math.